No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. I got my man Ice Burgundy in here. And I just want to say that all these years that I knew about you, I never really like thought about your name until today. That's brilliant. What do you mean by uh, thought about it? Because it's like Iceberg, and then also you're a blood, so it's like Burgundy. Yeah. That's like beyond me. Like, I never really thought about that until like today. That's, that's how I came up with it. That's a fucking brilliant one. You brought some mushrooms or something? Nah, it's probably <laughs> some good weed, like always. Yeah, what you got here? You got all the bubble gum and shit, huh? Yeah, this that shit that they charge like a thousand ounce for. A thousand an ounce? For cocaine prices. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you have a fucking crazy uh, track record, too, because there was like multiple reasons why I thought that we should do an interview. And then today, when I gave you a quick Google, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I almost forgot that you were the motherfucker in that fucking Rosemo video from back in the day, too. You were all wrapped up in all that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking crazy. So, wh where exactly are you from? Englewood. Englewood. Okay. And mm -hmm. so, uh, tell me a little bit about your, your upbringing and how you ended up uh, being where you're at. Hmm. I don't know. Just being a blood, I guess, you know. From a super early age, though, you knew that about your upbringing, that you were going to be a blood? Yeah. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. I grew up over there, so. But, um... You know, I got to where I'm at pretty much just being a blood, though, you know? <laughs> okay, but take me back to that. Was that, like, when I'm watching that video and shit, I'm sort of realizing that you were, like, at that time in particular, you were, like, the fucking, the dude. Like, every, you were, like, man, everybody looking out for ice or some shit like yeah, that. You were, like, everybody look out for me. Everybody care about me. You were, like, ain't nothing going to happen to me. Like, your, your whole vibe watching those old, the old videos and shit, I was just, like, man, this is, like, you definitely were like the fucking chosen one at that time. Like you had a real fucking attitude about you. And yeah. also, I drink a lot of coffee. I'm sorry if I'm coming in here too high energy. <laughs> no, nah, it's good. It's good. I fuck with you. Yeah, you know. yeah man. So, so take me back to like those those times, man. That was like because that whole fucking situation started because you were beefing with game on Twitter. Yeah, I guess so. It was. It started on Twitter. It wasn't like a beef. That was probably like with. People start calling Twitter beef. Mm. Oh, I mean, that was the first time that I ever. I remember like sitting at home being just a kid watching shit on, on World Star and that that whole Rosemo situation. R.I.P. That was the first time I ever seen anything like that. Yeah, that was going viral. You know, somebody say some shit on the internet, then you meet up with them. And then that all was the this, first time, and somebody really passing off of some shit that everybody watched unfold on World Star and Twitter. Like, I mean, that I just had never witnessed anything like that. Yeah, but um. To clear that up, game ho ass didn't have nothing to do with that. What do you mean? Him passing. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. So people. That's a lot of perceptions. Out people there. still think that game fucking masterminded that. Yeah. He be trying to go around and act like he did it. Because I was reading like articles about it earlier today, and it seemed like the cops never even had any intention of trying to charge him with that. Yeah, nah. Because he didn't do it. Right. So that, but that situation, like. I mean, it's hard for me to even think about how I could, like, replay all the shit that went on in that situation. But, like, more or less, how would you describe it if somebody was, like, asking you about what happened with that whole situation in retrospect? Um, how would you describe it? It's a long little shit, so to just try to sum it all up. My boy was on some street shit, you know. Rosemo was super close to you at that time? Yeah. I was like one of my childhood friends from like elementary. Uh -huh. I think like I met Rosemo when I was in like second grade, third grade maybe. I grew up all the way until, you know. Mm -hmm. But that whole situation, it was just brazy. It was just some, some real street shit. And I was just like the beginning of all this social media shit unraveling like you say do you remember what the the mind state was going into making that one classic video of you two just talking there like like you you were doing a video for world star they yeah. sent somebody to film that yeah it was lit he was lit we was lit it was lit that yeah you were just having fun with lit. it huh hell yeah that shit was fun i miss my boy you see he was on that motherfucker clowning the whole time Oh yeah, I don't do no talk. I don't do much talking. Yeah. The way he just kept saying that it was like classic shit. Like he he was just so full of personality in that video. I was I'm, I was just watching it the other day. Like man, this is like a tragedy because that dude could have been the kind of guy who was still like beloved by people from just listening to him talk years and years and years later. 
Now, everybody love my boy, man. Rip Rosemo, long live Rosemo. You already know. We need some backwoods. We do. We got the woods. You guys want to go grab a pack in front? I got some in my backpack, but it's my car. We definitely, we need some, we need some backwoods. Lou, you want to grab me a pack? We need the foreign ones, too. Let's get expensive. Uh, vanilla? We got to go foreign. If it ain't foreign, it's boring ice. Yeah, oh, y'all got the vanilla joints coming? Mm-hmm, 50 bucks a pack. Ah. You feel that's me? That's good. Actually, we might have to water them up, too, before we start smuggling those, because sometimes they come a little bit uh, crusty. Designer Farms. That's the new best shit out. This is? Yeah. All right. That's what's up. I wish I had a bear wood in my pocket to give you, but uh, they're on the whip. Don't worry about it. We finna smoke this good shit. Let's, let's like just skip all the way to modern times and let me just throw this question out there why were you in the hospital a couple weeks ago i got shot how what happened in detroit in the studio in detroit oh my god that's crazy i was like at the right place at the wrong time i guess somebody dropped a gun and it went off for real who the fuck were you in the studio with in detroit a whole bunch of people really that's crazy you're a fucking international dude well i guess national but you're always all over the place. Like people must throughout your career, people must have thought you were from Atlanta, LA, Queens, and now maybe Detroit. Yeah. You just I always mean, been able to to mix and mingle with all the I different like worlds. I like to travel. You know what I'm saying? I like the different ways of life and shit. That should be a real boo to me. You know. When did you get outside LA for the first time as a youngin? Shit. Real young, like as far as I can remember, we was going back to Alabama. You know, that's where my uh, family from. Oh, okay. So, so you we go back there on the summers, long car trips and shit. A lot of people in LA who grow up in the hood never really get to see other parts of the country. Nah, we was gone. My, my grandma had us out of here. My mama, we was out of here. Uh huh. So how did you even get into the rap game in the first place? Maybe I should just do that. Two eleven. You know, two eleven is. Nah, what's that? Used that? to be signed with Jeezy. Oh, okay. Him, he was signed with Jeezy, so that's I guess that'd be the start of it. I used to rap with him, and then uh, Walker. How did we the Walker, Walker thing happen? Which I know you're still in good terms with Walker because I texted him earlier. I said I'm interviewing Ice Burgundy today, and he said he he a real one. I love him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I met Walker out here when he was out here and shit. We was fucking around, and uh, he was filming that uh, hard hard in the paint video. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, and then uh, I bumped into him over there. And then the next day, Suge called me. Uh huh. Like, hey, where you at? Come to the studio with me and we'll walk a flock of some shit happened, some street shit and shit. So I pulled up and. You had to put in some work for Walker? Nah, it was just some shit. Are they dry? That happened. Maybe. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, they are. Throw a little, a little sauce in there. A little, a little smart water will get those things feeling good. Yeah, so we pulled up, and then we ended up making that song. Which song? That went on his album. Oh, okay. And then he just like, hey, he called me. He's like, hey, I'm going to put that song on my album. The label love it. It was just a nice, uh, you, you were a good combination of somebody who was available on a street level, and then also he, he just realized that you're actually hard as a rapper? Yeah, I guess so. That's crazy. So, so were you traveling with Waka for a long time and shit? Yeah, I lived in Atlanta, too. For how long? I had a spot in Atlanta. I lived in Atlanta for like, spot we had, we had that for 10 months. So, mm -hmm. so I lived there for 10 months. But then I used to be there for like months on the end with Waka too, though, staying at his house. Sometimes people forget how crazy his fucking movement was at that moment. Uh, Brick Squad was the biggest movement. It was insane. It was, yeah, that's the right word, insane. Was he cool with Gucci at this point or was this already when they kind of weren't down with each uh, other? No, nah, that was cool. When I first came, it wasn't no Brick Squad Monopoly. It was ten seventeen. Right. And so, did you did you witness that whole switch where all of a sudden they weren't cool and he split off and did his own thing? You were probably privy to all the crazy ass behind the scenes drama and shit, right? Yeah, I peeped it. Uh, <laughs> I seen it uh, but they always was like brothers, though, you know. Right. So it'd be like when brothers get mad at each other, but they always come back. I remember finding out somebody said like, yeah, like you know, me and Waka or me and Gucci had like physical fights, like we beating the fuck out of each other in the studio. I was like, oh my god, that is so hard for me to imagine. Waka and Gucci going at it, fighting in the studio, like what the fuck? It'd be more like wrestling, but they ain't do that shit all the time. That just happened one time. It got real kind of serious. Right. 
And so what was what was your perspective at that time? Did you consider yourself more of an artist or did you consider yourself more of like a street dude on Waka's behalf at that time? I never it's really, a fine line. I never really considered myself an artist. So you weren't like 100% motivated to like make it as a, as a rapper? No, nah, because I never got paid for this shit. Like I got paid for what I did, but it wasn't like I had a contract. Uh-huh. So what kind of friendship you when I came out? in, the game was changing from CDs to digital. Mm. You feel me? So the the shit I did do on the CDs, it was cool. That little rap money, but the streams, that's where it was at. The streams, yeah. People forget that there was like a weird <laughs> dark time in the music industry where kind of between the CD era and the streaming era, where everybody was acting like the business side of the music industry was over. Yeah, crazy. That's exactly what happened. So yeah, you you never really like aspired, <laughs> you never like aspired to be like this like big rapper. You kind of saw it as just like you were you were playing your part, or or what was your attitude on everything? If it happens, it happens. Right. I never really wanted to rap. Mm -hmm. It just always happened for me, you know. It just kind of unfolded that way. Yeah, for some strange reason. I like a guy who rolls up inside the actual blunt. Oh, you're mixing strains too? Yeah. You're mixing the blue raspberry with the, what is it? Watermelon. Watermelon. You got to have both flavors going at the same time? Nah, I ain't never did it like this. I just wanted to do it now because I've been smoking it. You might the get other way. crossfaded. Yeah, let's see something. Try something out. Um, man. Mix so it with some more cookie. <laughs> just a little bit of everything. You're like the dude who goes to 7-Eleven and fills up the soda cup with all the different flavors. But I don't do that shit. I hate that shit. Yeah, that's weird. That shit is weird as fuck. <laughs> I mean, I agree, man. You're also the kind of guy who doesn't close the backwood pack. We should probably close that up just in case, right? Well, I guess you also have water all in it, too. So I am that type, though. I will leave that motherfucker up. <laughs> <laughs> You'll just leave it open? Fuck up all the woods. <laughs> I'm such a nutcase with it. It's like I got to immediately like crunch the pack up. I'm like so paranoid about the air getting in there. You're smoking fifty dollar woods, though. Fifty dollar woods. You got to be extra careful. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Facts. There's some some guy probably died bringing those over from Greece or some shit. That's where they come from. I don't know. I mean, they probably just throw it in the mail. I don't even know where the fuck they come from. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, like. I don't know. Like, how did how did the uh, the the Brick Squad era of your life slowly come to a close, or when when did you stop like hanging out around the Walker situation all the time? I just stopped rapping because I wasn't making no money off this shit. You were over it. Yeah, and then I met Lonnie. Lonnie like, nigga, we making money off this shit. Uh huh. We streaming. We get money. I'm like, oh yeah. He's like, yeah, you need to start back rapping. What year was this that you got tied with Lonnie? He's talking about Bang Gang Lonnie too, by the way of uh of Bang Gang. I don't know what year was that line was that South by South with. Two thousand fifteen, sixteen. You were still fucking rolling around with Walker up until that era? No. I just wasn't rapping. That's just when I met him. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you actually went to South by Southwest though. You must have still like had some kind of like aspirations to be in the music world if you were going there. No, Nobody goes fucking, there just to have fun. You know, I live in Dallas. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. What the fuck? Got, There's another state you lived in, huh? Yeah. So that's why I was down there. It was like, all right, fuck it. It's three hours away. Let's go. Right. What the fuck are you doing in Dallas? You know, uh, Dirty Glove Bastard? Yes. I went down there with him. I was fucking with him. But uh, hustling. Hustling. Right yeah. So you, the, the, you could never leave the streets alone, huh? No. Nah. <laughs> Maybe for a little bit? I ain't never left him alone. It's always been, even when I was a walker. Right. Rapping never paid my bills. You been arrested a bunch of times, or you always kept your nose clean? Nah, I got a long little... I've been in jail a bunch of times. Oh, yeah? What's your longest bit? Maybe four months. Oh, four months. Not too crazy. Enough to get a taste for it, realize it sucks. Yeah, that shit sucks. Shit. One day, you realize it sucks. Where were you locked up at? County jail, here. Here? Mm -hmm. Oof. Was it bad? I mean, it was regular. It wasn't as bad as people say it was. Really? Not that bad. I got friends who like just went into county for the first time. They're telling me how horrible it is, and I, I don't know if I should believe them or not. I'm gonna take your story. Yeah, I don't know what they was into. Mm -hmm. For it to be so horrible. My one friend got caught with a fucking crazy ass fucking gun that I never even seen anything like it. He came in, he showed it to me. All of a sudden, boom! He got, gets caught with it like two hours later. What kind of gun? <laughs> <laughs> And he's the one who said he went to jail and it's horrible. 
He was telling me how bad it was. Yeah. I mean, I don't know like what kind of. is what? It's I, dirty and shit. <laughs> I shouldn't say exactly you might what kind have of. to gun. fight a couple of times. With All I know is it had a big ass, like, bag on the side of it to catch the shells. Uh, he was, he was bumming with some shit. Yeah. I was like, I, this looks like a fucking <laughs> army gun, bro. Like, I, I was taken aback by it. Um, so you, so you, you live out in LA now again? Yeah. I'm back and forth like Aaliyah. You feel me? Has that always been what you've been on? Is just like uh, traveling around? You don't like to stay, stay in one place for too long? No. uh Shit get boring around here. Facts. Get boring everywhere you sit there too long, you know? Yeah, that's a fact. I like a, I like a guy who's on the move. So, um, yeah, man. So that, that <laughs> the situation that I saw recently that made me like really start thinking like, man, we got to get fucking ice in here for an interview ASAP is that I seen a video of a certain somebody talking shit about you saying that you fell down at the Nipsey Memorial and that's how you got hurt. And then you're, that's the situation you're describing. Where Damn, you that's what he said. The Nipsey. I didn't even hear that part. I that was because he deleted it by the time you saw it. Right. Yeah. I know. I, I seen it, but I didn't even look at it. I just seen him say something and then I went off. I think he and said, then he deleted it. Yeah, he said, like, dude fell down at the Nipsey Menor- Memorial and cut himself on some glass, and he tried to act like he got shot. Yeah, I've seen that shit. Then when I went off on his bitch ass, he deleted it. Shout out to Bosco. Yeah, you have beef with him for, like, 10 years, right? There ain't no shout-outs to Bosco. <laughs> we don't shout that whole ass nigga out. So that nigga come to Inglewood. He, is, he lives in Inglewood, right? No, he don't. No? Hell no. But he's from there, right? He was. Have you always had problems with this dude or no? No. Nah. It's just... That's when he turned into a little hoe. But for people out there who don't know what I'm talking about, you had beef with him since all the way back with that Rosemont situation we were talking about. So this is a long-standing disdain that you guys apparently have for each other, right? It was never a beef. He said some slick shit and got beat up, and that's what made it a beef. Right. If you want to call it that. So have you, you haven't seen him in many years? Never seen him since. Damn, crazy. Tell him to come to Inglewood. I mean, he might have a response to this. I doubt it. <laughs> he did delete it, though, so apparently he realized he was wrong about I mean, I, I thought that was pretty foul. Even from Bosco, who's known for being pretty foul on the Internet, I was like, damn, you're really going to give this guy a hard time for getting shot or something along those lines? He wasn't thinking. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Shit, so, how, yeah, what, what have you been on recently? What's, what's, what's the life of Ice Burgundy like, bro? I've been fucking around in Detroit making this new music. Mm-hmm. And you do have, you still to this day though like your music is, is hard. I was listening to a lot of it in the lead up to this. It's like I'm still I'm still a fan, just like I was back in the day. Good, good. I, this new shit is even harder. I like it. Like my my shit back in the day, I was just rapping like I told you. I didn't even. It just happened like that. I met Waka, did a song. He's like, "Come on, let's go on tour." And next thing you know, I'm in the studio, and I didn't even know what I wanted to rap about. This new shit. I don't know exactly what I'm going for. What do you consider your lane as a rapper? Like your style? Uh, money motivated music. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you want to get some money. I mean, New music. I'm listening to you on songs with like Lonnie and Drago and Bino and stuff. And it's like, you guys all have a very dope chemistry like it's, it's hard to even put my finger on exactly what it is and shit but you guys are all like you're all rapping different but there's like a similarity to what everybody's doing and there's like a very like cohesive flow amongst everybody yeah we just be on the same shit that's why so and then you know everybody's different so they come together but you're right it is a good chemistry there yeah definitely then my little young niggas how old are you at this point 33 33. I'm 35, so I feel you. You feel me? Mm. Yeah, I'm a little young niggas. It's hard to compete with these young guns. For sure. I let them have it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start a label, though. You are? Like, I can uh, spot talent good. You feel me? Mm. Everybody I listen to, they end up blowing up. I'll be catching them early, too, before they be anything. And you got that A&R gene in your, in your mind? Yeah. There's a lot of people out there that I think have that and don't realize it. Like a lot of people who are just genuine music fans, and I realize like that this dude is the type of dude that would be KOD, able to. KOD May third. Yes, that. Oh yeah, yeah. Be on the lookout. for You're that. going to the strip club May third. No, KOD. Oh. Detroit. Well, we going to King hey. Diamond, so get that motherfucking album May third. I'm on that motherfucker. The Shoreline show on the third. Oh, the Shoreline show on the third. You gonna be there at that? Yeah. 
that's what's up. You're like the rare blood that's wrapped up in this whole little crip universe. Damn. That's what it is now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Since Nipsey died, it's a crip universe? <laughs> no. But you, you, I thought we still, I thought the bloods had it. You don't think a shoreline is like a crip rap group? No. It don't occur to you to be like that? Hell no. I seen some double C's and they, they can't write a word B's like brick. <laughs> they, they, uh, they, they, they throwing up bloods and shoreline is just a cool group, you know? Okay. I see no Jeezy. Yeah. I, I never heard none of them say anything about gangbanging, really. But I'll see OGZ like put something on his Instagram story, and it's like he'll write the word like brick, and it's B R I C C. I'm like, um, all right. I don't know enough about gangbanging, but I'll assume that means something. He just said something earlier. What what he put on that shit? He does always do this. It's something bracking or something. Bragging. He yeah. said bragging. Yeah. And we all having fun with it. You know, we all YG fans we and shit. We all having fun with it. <laughs> <laughs> These days. Hey. Oh, shit. What up? Uh, we got lighter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't got a lighter. Wait. Yeah, I do. Pants too tight. Oh, I got you on the no cap lighter, too. The no cap. That's the how no you know. Bat. You know that blunt's going to smoke good. It's being lit with no cap. No cap. Um. So you're still smoking weed? Yeah. You off all the other drugs or what? You leave that behind or are you still you still with the activities? Oh, what other drugs? I don't know. There's a lot of other ones out there, man. I don't sip syrup no more. You're over it? Hell yeah. Why? What happened? There's a drought? I came too dependent on it. Like, if I didn't want to drink, I had to drink. Mm -hmm. My stomach would be all fucked up. So I'm like, damn, I'm like a real dope fan. I got to quit this shit. Yeah. That definitely happens. It all seems fun until you start seeing dudes in the studio at like two in the morning freaking the fuck out because they can't get any juice. And you start to realize like, Talking about I'm a shit on myself, <laughs> man. <laughs> That's how bad it was. You were at That's risk how. of shitting on yourself? All type of shit. Hell yeah, my stomach used to be fucked up. Really? If I didn't drink. That's why I, if, if I ain't drink, I had to stay in all day. Yeah. Because I know my shit is going to be fucked up. That shit get the going. Oh, man. You can't be shitting out in public places and shit. Oh, you're against that? Yeah, hell yeah. I'll take a shit anywhere. I'm, that's out. That's how I judge somebody is how many times you had to shit outdoors in your life. Yeah. How many, <laughs> <laughs> how many times you done it? I don't know how many times I've done it. I've done it, but it ain't boo. I've been doing it. I've done it hella times. Not, not in my, my adult life now, but like back when I was riding BMX bikes, it's like you would be hungover, go out, ride bikes, you're out, you're, it's hot as fuck. All of a sudden, you just got to go post up behind a dumpster somewhere and just take a shit on the ground. But I, um, that's, that's a real skill. Yeah. Yeah, that's a skill. I ain't never got down like that. I was talking about shit. like at a Burger King bathroom oh, no. or something. No, I mean, that's bougie. Anybody could just walk on a Burger King and take a shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's too easy. <laughs> no, nah, but you know, that's the problem is L.A. is too urban. There's not that many opportunities to take a street shit. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from like right outside Boston, but more in the fucking, you know, you could just like, the, all right, this is the biggest difference between like L.A. and where I'm from, from my p perspective, is that where I grew up, if there's like a supermarket, you could go behind the supermarket and there would be all loading docks and like some trees and all this kind of shit. So it's like you, you would go like behind somewhere and you would see you might not see somebody doing something fucked up, but you would see remnants that there was somebody doing something fucked up. You find like a needle, a bunch of old condoms some fucking porno magazine, some shit like that. In LA, I don't really know where, if I was like a young person, where I would be like doing fucked up shit at because there's you can't like go behind the supermarket. You gotta go to the hood. There you go. Go to the park. The park is, the definitely park is where it goes down. Number right one get off. A skate park. I don't know what they doing up there. I can only imagine. This does taste crazy. <laughs> it's like fucking Starburst, bro. It's the blue raspberry. <laughs> Holy shit, bro. You got to smell that shit. It smell and taste like what it smoked like. It really does. He smelled the blunt. <laughs> he got to smell the weed. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I tasted it, bro. I was like, man, this shit crazy. Uh, shit. Where do you stay at in L.A. these days? Inglewood, Glendale. Glen very different places, very far apart. Yeah. But you you go back and forth. I mean, Glendale and is where you like stay at, yeah. and then you go back to the hood. Yeah. That's what's up. How did the, the Nipsey thing affect you? Was that crazy to find out about? Yeah, it was crazy. It really didn't affect me like that, but it's a sad situation. You know him? Nah. I met him before, but I don't know him, you know? <coughs> I'm going to be honest. I don't think I ever tasted weed that tastes more like the name of the strain than that. 
I've never tasted weed that tastes more like bubble gum than that. They probably actually like put bubble gum on the shit or what? I don't know. I just smoke it. I don't make it. No, yeah. I don't know what the fuck they do. Me neither. But I feel like I just ate a fucking handful of Skittles. That's the best shit out right now. How much you smoke a day? Uh, depends on the day. Mm. <coughs> Somewhere in between a 7 to a 14. Grams. Yeah. That's respectable. What uh how you feel about all this truce shit that's been going on? You think it's realistic? Truce? Yeah, like all the people, the gangs coming together and shit. Everybody seems very optimistic about uh, it. There ain't no truce. You don't believe it? Hell no. Not even a slowdown in violence? It might be a little slowdown. Ain't no truce though. Mm-hmm. A lot of people who don't give a fuck. Yeah. Something you just gotta wait for something to happen. I mean somebody got popped at the funeral procession. Yeah, hey, see. How the truce is that? Hmm. What's your perspective on like gangbang in general, though? At this point in your adult life, you know you you grew up with it. It's See, watered down. It's changed a lot, for sure. I don't even really know what's going on these days with these young niggas, but they can have it like we had it, you know. Hmm. I mean, social media changed a lot of shit, right? For sure, that shit fucked up the world. Is that how you feel? A lot of the shit that you probably like got away with when you were younger, when you think about it now, you're like, damn, that would not have worked these days. For sure. Like Nipsey Killer, damn near would have got away. Mm. That badass camera, you can't see his face. Yep. Social media went straight to it. This is the guy. Right. And even like the cameras. I don't even think the people with ear told. <laughs> That's crazy. I, I never heard nobody saying that somebody gave a statement. That is crazy to think about that, like, if it wasn't for, yeah, I mean, social media would have figured it out for the cops if the cops weren't able to figure it out on their own. That's for wild. Sure. For sure. Damn. That's crazy. Um, Yeah, so you're thinking about starting a label? Yeah. What's going to be the goal? You got artists in mind? I got, like, one or two I've been looking at, but I don't know if they're the ones, but... Got one or two. You feel like you're ready to step back from being the artist yourself, or hell yeah. Because you're you're good at rapping, but it's like at the same time when you think about it, it's like if you really want to like try to push a new artist, it's like don't you feel like they just want to see a young, brand new dude first time out? For sure, for sure. That's why I just make music with my niggas and shit. Cause we, you know we all make good music. And they young and they popping. And they next. Mm-hmm. Facts. Um, so you you never had a falling out with Waka? That never became like a bad situation or anything for a period of time? Nah. I don't know fallout. We probably had a few arguments, but it wasn't no fallout or nothing. Mm-hmm. That's what's up. Um, yeah, I don't know. What else you got in the works? What's been going on? This new tape, Inglewood to Detroit. Coming up to Detroit to Inglewood, a single, you feel me? I love that song. I basically got everybody from Detroit on there. Right. What's it like when you go out there as an L.A. dude? Kind of remind me like the old L.A., like back in the day. Right. In the 90s, early 2000s. Because it's just grimy as fuck? <laughs> Maybe on bullshit. They be getting money, they hustling, you know. You're the kind of dude where you, you like being in that environment? You like being around the, the street shit? You think you'd have a hard time just posting up in the mansion in Calabasas or what? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to get one. I just got to get there. <laughs> you might got one. Invite me over. I don't got one yet, but no, nah, actually, I don't know. I feel like if I, I need two houses. If I'm at a, a house that I hang out with rappers at, I need two houses. Cause I'm not trying to sleep there, knowing that somebody been just been in my crib. I've never had anybody in my crib, except girls. That's move. I'm gonna be real with you. I did. A they sna- raised you right. I did a Snapchat video with my girl and this other porn star right before I came here, and her husband was waiting in the car. For her. For her. While she was in there. What kind of Snapchat video did? I did some premium shit. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we'll say that thing. And so this is the thing too, is I'm wondering like <laughs> listen, I'm wondering what the husband's gonna be like, right? Mm-hmm. What kind of dude this is. My girl saw him. My girl said that he is black, tall, good looking, and used to be in the military. I'm like, what the fuck? That is not I was I was not expecting it, that kind of description. I was thinking it's gotta be some fucking weird type dude who's like okay with this girl or whatever. Them the ones. I'm, I'm fascinated with this dude now. And now I'm they, they were trying to I'm trying to convince her to do the podcast interviewing a porn star with her husband. That's but what you got going? You know what would be the only thing better than that is interviewing a porn star with her dad. He a marine nigga, so you know that's what they own. They tricks, they be going overseas, they be just paying for bitches, they don't care. I don't know how they get down exactly, but that's how they get down. This girl had just gotten new tits and a new ass, so I was feeling her. She looked better than the last time I seen her. You and your wife lit like that? Yeah, we get down. You got a wifey? Nah. Can't do it? I just ain't found one. Mm. You still running around with all these thoughts or what? One. You yeah. running around with these thoughts? Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> It's hard to trust them, right? Yeah. That's a problem, man. Like, it's like, there's a lot of like little thoughts that run around and think about like, man, like, I kind of want to smash that. And then you think about like, damn, Skinny from the Nine already hit that. That's fucked up. Yeah, if a bitch <laughs> like Skinny from the Nine, she definitely not going to like me. I mean, you know, she might have just, she might be brand new in the game. She might have made some mistakes six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, <laughs> you don't know what the fuck you're doing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Stop snitching. <laughs> Stop snitching. Skinny. You know, does that kill it for you if you if you talking to a girl and you find out she gave a real lame some pussy? Yeah. That's it tells a lot about her. Mm. <laughs> you know? Like a famous lame, like a, someone who's famous for being a lame. It just lets you know she lame as hell too. Right, because she didn't have the detection to figure yeah, that like, out. Bitch, you really you, what'd you do that for? Mm. Lame as hell. You thought he was somebody, obviously, or something. But then that's the question. Is it worse if you find out that she fucked somebody that maybe you don't necessarily, like, you're not friends with them, but they're, like, legit. Like, it's like a real, real, real respectable dude. And you find out that she would just smash him. It's good. I got to respect it. At least you're like, all right. Yeah. You made a little bit of a good decision there. Bitch, you like gangsters. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> not even a gangster. What if it was, like, a stockbroker? I don't know nothing about stockbrokers. It's hard to have an opinion, right? Yeah. They That's probably nice. boo. They <laughs> smart. They got a check, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely they got a check. I mean, that's the crazy shit to me. It's like, this dude's in the military? Like, the fuck? Like, I feel like you go to war so you don't have to, like, I, mean, I guess he's just probably into it. Some of the porn chicks that I've talked to and stuff who have husbands and shit, the husband is just into it. He likes knowing that they're going out and just being grimy as hell. And getting smashed. Yeah, they don't mind. They're into it. So you come in, you like a porn star now? Nah. I just interview him and volunteer my dick on Snapchat once in a while. That type of shit. Could you do it? Could I do it? Yeah. Nah, nah. I couldn't do it. Why? Do you just not want the world to know what you're packing? Is that awkward for you? Hell no, it's just, I, don't, I, I wasn't raised like that. <laughs> I hear that. I never would have thought I would have been able to do it either. My girl just slowly, like, fucking broke my defenses down, and I was just like, all right, fuck it, man. Got you out there. <coughs> totally. Yeah, she got me out there, man. Um, You got any porn stars on your list? No. No. Nah. What kind of girls are you into? From the block? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> they end up being from the block once you find out where they're really from. Though, uh, so I guess so. I don't feel, I feel like I would have a hard time like getting along or like just ha- even having anything in common with a girl unless she was really like getting money at this point in my life. They got to be getting money though. That's the type of bitches I like. Get Bitches that get money. Mm, definitely. But then I don't know. Like I say, they end up being from the block. <laughs> Proverb, <laughs> like not literally from the block, but acting like they're from the block. Yeah, mm. or the other, or literally from the block. They just be made up and dressed up good. You might thought they wasn't from the block. 
that's a super crazy shit for me too is that i will meet girls sometimes like around here and shit who they're young as fuck they're 19 20 and they already got some crazy ass like scammer escort mentality that if i to be honest i feel like they got it from fucking listening to city girls and cardi b and shit like that like they fucking pop culture is like teaching them it's all good to be a hoe and to be preying on dudes and they're just taking these messages super literally and they're just I seen some fucking For like sure. I seen some girls that they they were around here one time they're like nineteen these three little white girls I see them in Vegas I'm like what y'all about to do they're like oh we about to go hit a lick I'm like what the fuck do you even think that means and they were like pulling up on some fucking forty five year old fucking dude and they were planning on taking his shit or something they was gonna get him I'm like where the fuck did you girls get this kind of mentality who told you that this was a good way to go the bitty girls for real. But then they got Yachty right in their shit. So Yachty's a scammer who can't really rap about <laughs> scamming, but then he's writing scammer lyrics for these girls, even though they actually are scammers as well. Is that what's going on? Well, one of them's in jail for scamming right now, yeah. That's what that bitch went for? Pretty sure. One of the Claremont twins about to go in and do a year or some shit for, uh, for scamming too, for who? using a dead guy's credit card. Who was that? You know the Claremont twins? Hot ass like Instagram chicks, like twins or something. Little Instagram famous bitches. Yeah, and uh, one of them was like using a dude's fucking credit card after he died or some shit, and then they got her for it, and she ended up taking a year. Oh, uh, she was a hoe. That's some real shit right there. Fucking using this fool's credit card up after he's deceased. Damn, yeah, you yeah, got yeah. no feelings. I'm not that either. smart either. Cause it seems like pretty easy to get caught How doing the fuck that. She get the card. He was story. probably already letting her. Use, <laughs> he was probably already like holding his card, like some some dude is just like letting her go out and shit. And then he died, and she was like, "Fuck it, I might as well just run this shit up." Go dumb, huh? That's how I imagine her. I don't know. Her little sugar garbs, huh? We're not fact checking it and shit. Yeah. Hey man, all I'm saying is when I die, leave my fucking credit card alone. <laughs> you did though. Let us run that motherfucker. Yeah. I guess if they, if they end up going to doing time for it, that'd be the ultimate revenge. A girl going to jail after you die for something she did to you. I'll snitch from me on the grave. <laughs> <laughs> you a six nine fan? Hell no. <laughs> what about you? You a six nine fan? Uh, nah, not as a person. And uh, musically, I mean, though, it was a wave. It was fun while it lasted. I feel like it's over. I don't feel like anybody's playing gummo anymore. Yeah, I didn't listen to them at all. No. There was a period of time that, that it was excited. You think he's going to blow when he get out? I think he's going to have to do something very different. But the thing is, this is the problem. You want this roach? Good. I feel like the problem... Yo. <clears throat> that man, man? No, it's Rob. Rob, Rob, what Rob say, Vicious. Say, hey, the, uh, jumper. Yeah, Rob Vicious. Point, point, point it right at the mic. What'd you say? I ain't say shit. What's the deal? <laughs> What's <laughs> cracking, bro? How you doing? Cool. What's the deal, my nigga? Hey, you give me an opinion on this. I was just asking uh, Ice Burgundy. I said you consider Shoreline a crip rap group. What, what do you think of that? Hell no, nah, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm just checking. So what you on? Sit up cooling right now. I'm just at the house. What's up, Adam? You got some weed for me or something? Nah, but fucking Ice Burgundy got some shit that tastes like fucking Starburst, bro. Uh, burn. Burn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know how much you got. Some rapper weed. You want some rapper weed, he said. <laughs> hey, you the rapper. Pull up. Let's let's it's use some like use some clout. We we need some clout, Rob. Get some rap get some rapper weed over here. You said get some clout. Nah, I said you got some clout. You Shoreline Mafia. You guys are hot right now. You're the hottest shit in the streets. You should be able to get us a pound right now, Rob, and a pint. Shit, they scared of me. Ain't nobody finna. <laughs> 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 Power. Everything. Ain't nobody finna pull up a Rob with no pound. That sound don't even sound right. Nah. Fuck, shit. If you're listening to this right now, hit Rob Vicious up on, on Instagram and bring him, give him a pound. Oh, if y'all only... Oh, see, look. That's where the people love me. No jumper seat. Like, that's what you do. Go to no jumper be like, look, you, you fuck with Shoreline Mafia. Go ahead and DM Rob. Let him know you got some weed for him. 
there's definitely some fucking growers out there that are just looking for some clout one way or another, and they will pull up. They got you. <laughs> Rob Vicious, ladies and gentlemen. Sure May, May, May 3rd, May 4th. It's sold out. Don't worry about it. I told you. We in there. Um, yeah, shit. So uh, what's, what's your message to the world? What, what do you want everybody to know? Don't be a sucker. Get money. <laughs> That's real. You know? I appreciate you coming in, man. Already, man. Appreciate That's legendary. You. Appreciate you having me. Are there, uh, let me ask you this. When's the last time you talked to Frenchie? Probably like a week ago. For real? Yeah. It's like that. Yeah. Damn. Not more than two weeks. Brick Squad is still still tight as it ever been. Yeah, hey, I love Frenchie, man. I fuck with Frenchie. Yeah, Frenchie. Oh, we, we gotta get him on here. I bet he got some stories. For sure. Last time I seen him on Instagram, he was throwing fucking throwing shit in the club and screaming on on Gucci. <laughs> hey, would Gucci want to come to Queens? Hey. It might happen. <laughs> Hey, Frenchie is retarded, man. I love that nigga, man. He loved Gucci, too. He was just mad, man. Right. Damn, this shit spilled. <clears throat> Facts. But yeah, Frenchie got a whole bunch of stories for you, for sure. Mm. He hey. got all the stories. R.I.P. Dunk, too. I mean, yeah, Rip Dunk. That's you know, nothing. We should have touched on that earlier. You have a close relationship with him? Yeah, I was bull with Dunk. It wasn't real super close. I liked the Dunk, though. Because when we first came, everybody used to fuck with us, but Dunk didn't fuck with us. For real? Why? Just because he was like, who are y'all niggas? <laughs> fuck y'all niggas. Right. Fuck about y'all being from the West Coast. But you got cool eventually? Yeah, I was fucking with Dunk. Damn. Did that kind of fuck up the whole group vibe when he passed? Yeah. For real? He was, fucked up Because he was like kind of the leader, maybe even, like aside from Walker? Yeah, for his hood, for DG, for Dirt Gang, for Derez and Sean and them. Right. Yeah, but that was like one of Walker's best friends, too, you feel me? If not just his best friend, Dunk. So it fucked up Walker, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. That's sad as fuck, man. Yeah. I'll never get to see what he could have done. I'm trying to play my boys track yeah. at 912 Ron 904. But, uh, Top off and PayPal is Evo Montana, up Derez Deshaun. That's a you fact. Feel me? Derez is fire. There it goes. That's Dunk. That's crazy, actually, to think that fucking Derez had such a big moment last year and that he came from that. Yeah, yeah. Duncan him was like that. That is wild. Yeah. He was like fucking damn near security for, for Dunk at a certain point, right? Wasn't he just like straight up that sort of role? Who? Uh, Derez. He was security for who? Waka? For, I mean, uh, for Dunk. For Dunk. Wasn't he like fucking... Just, he, he was always rapping, though. He was Dunk always, always believed in him. You feel me? So... They didn't have security. They was just a gang, dirt gang. They was right, not know, security, but you know, he was probably like the dude at that Entourage. time. Entourage. It's crazy. They had a whole little chaz, all them niggas. And then also, the, he was there for the Birdman pull up on Breakfast Club, which is iconic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, he had a rich goon history prior to having a, a big hit record. Yeah. The Reds was always gonna blow. He been hard since back in the day. That's why Dunk had him. Mm. You feel me? He was always right there rapping with Dunk. Facts. All right. Appreciate you, man. Thanks for coming on. No jumper. Coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. This fucking watermelon weed got me unable to say the word YouTube. Thanks. <laughs> Peace.